got their food ready, ready for the show. I have the early minutes. I have all the early minutes ready. Yes, you do. If I'm going, I have 11 slides, so I'm, I'm going too fast to slow. Just give me a signal. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, I asked him, but you know, I can introduce him to you guys. Already, you already know who he is. But um, just to be official, I wanted to do. But um, he said no, so he's gonna introduce nice, himself. Nice. <laughs> I can myself, so you don't have to. Yes, uh, my name is Mustafa Freik. Uh, I'm a software product manager. At the same time, I'm starting school in our business school, executive ed education, in two weeks and uh, for six months. So uh, today I'm going to be talking about project management because we know that you know it's a part of our daily life. No matter what you do, there's always project. Since we were like two until we die, we always have something in mind that we want to achieve, and we do it or not. So um, uh, my background is software. Uh, I am a product manager. Some people confuse the product management with project management. It's a new terminology. This product management. Thing. Uh, what I do at work normally is I define the, 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 the functionality. So uh, when we have software, I define the technical, uh, for the technical team, I say, we need a device, a tool that can take me from Boston to New York in less than three hours. And then it's going to cost me less than $200 to use this tool, give me the tool. So I basically tell them what I need because I represent the business team because my customers need that tool. Then the project management takes it. And he goes to engineering again, then he makes it done. So uh, I define on what is done. The, pro the engineering team defines how it's done. They can give me a car, a bike, motorcycle, or plane, right? So they, you know, they, they basically satisfy the business requirements. And the project management is the man in the middle. They, they do the when. They do the timing. They do the risk management. They do the task management and people management. <coughs> so today, uh, we'll have a high-level look. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail of product management uh, terminologies because, I, again, I'm not a project manager. But the terminology that we're going to use is daily life terminologies. You're not going to see anything that you don't know. And, and uh, you know, most of these things, it's basically just reminding you how it works and uh, what a successful project uh, should have. So today, we'll define the project management. Uh, we'll look at the goals, how you set up the goal. Uh, what do we have about options and how do we choose the best option? How do we do time management and risk management? Then after, that's all the planning process. After planning, we execute and after the execution, we do post-mortem analysis. And then at the end, I'm going to uh, talk about a few tools that you can use for project management. So, uh, what is project management? I I probably there's like a hundred different pro, you know the meanings definitions of it. I just wrote this one myself last night. It's a planning and execution of set of tasks that satisfy goals measured by metrics. So you have a goal or a set of goals, and you manage all the tasks in order to reach that goal, and you measure it by the metrics. If you don't measure it, you can't say if it's good or bad. You you cannot find the success criteria. Every goal has to have a success criteria because that's how you verify that you got the right thing at the end. So normally, it's uh, basically going from point A to point Z. And on the way, there's point B, C, D, all those points uh, that you go. Sometimes you skip. Sometimes you change your route. Uh, but it's basically going from one place to the other one. And during that, you do the planning, execution, and the post-mortem analysis. Okay, so what do you mean by measured by metrics? Measured by metrics is, uh, I will give, give you very good examples. Uh, so. Metrics means you set the goals, that you want to do something. And uh, let's say, if you give the example that I go to my engineering team and say, give me a tool that can take me from Boston to New York in less than three hours. They give me the tool, I have to measure it, right? I have to get into the thing and then look at the clock and try, you know, that I'm going to have the thing. That's measuring. Because without that, I won't know if I'm getting the right thing. If it takes me for more than 10 hours, they don't give me what I need. So there's no measurement. And then... Uh, Measurement is not always at the end of the project. Sometimes you measure in the middle of the project. Because if you wait, let's say it's a two-year project, and the project is going, going badly, but you don't know, you wait until the last minute and you test, it fails, it's too late. You lost two, two years, there's no going back. You have to constantly check uh, the status of the project all the time. That's very important. And, you know, the 
today we walk through with, a, with an example, so it's going to just uh, be very clear, I hope, very clear. Uh, so, the most important thing is planning. Uh, that's the whole thing, that's the whole initiation, and the execution is a different thing. Uh, execution is always important, but if the plan sucks, execution, even if the execution is perfect, the project is going to fail. So, uh, the, the most important thing is setting the goal right, and then finding the next steps. So, we first identify the main goals. What are we trying to achieve? What exactly do we need? Extremely, extremely precise, extremely, extremely clear. What a crisp message. What do we want to do with this project? That's very important. Uh, most of the time, people miss the main goal, so they make uh, bad decisions. Because they want to go somewhere, uh, they want to reach a certain point. But because they don't set the goal very, very well uh, in the beginning, when they have issues, they make the wrong choices. They don't go to that point anymore because they are not into the into the main goal. They just lose their focus. So it's very, very important to set the main goals and probably write it somewhere. Uh, after we find out the main goal, we find alternatives to reach the goal. So usually uh, and hopefully, uh, there is more than just one way to go to point C. It could be you know different routes. It could be slow mode, fast mode. The, the more options you have, the better because you can have choices and then uh, the more options you have because you, the more plan B and plan C's that you have and it's always smart to set a goal put two options and then talk about think about the plan B what if go, something goes wrong today we're going to do barbecue right we said it's snowing do I have a plan B no I'm going to do barbecue outside because <laughs> I want to but if I couldn't then you know that you know one plan B that I had is I'm not sure if the tank has enough gas I was going to measure it, but I didn't have time. So in the middle, if you run out of gas, my plan B is I'm going to continue cooking inside. So, and then if I still can't do it, plan C, we're going to order pizza. So <laughs> the, the good project planning is always, so you know, getting ahead of the project, like thinking about the next things. It's extremely simple. But you have to just think first. Uh, so we look at the options. Then we set the timelines. Uh, the timing, the sequence may change here a little bit. So, you know, it, obviously, every project has a timeline. You want to do something within that time, uh, time limitation. That's a constraint. <coughs> uh, so you have to find out the, di uh, the timeline, and it's more, usually more than just one timeline, uh, depending on the size of the project. Then you specify the final deadline based on that. Then you pick the best option. Based on all these things, you pick the best option, and then you go with it. Very simple example. Uh, a house project, right? And. Uh, that's the before and after. I searched for this picture for 30 minutes. <laughs> and then uh, this gives uh, you know point A to point Z. So let's say we, this is our house. And our goal is we want to paint our house because we're going to rent it. We want to paint it so well so that we can charge a lot of rent, right? We want to make money. Nobody wants to make less money than they, they could. Everybody wants to max out their opportunities, right? So our goal is I want to paint my house so that I can rent it out for the highest price possible within my budget. I have limited budget. I mean, if I spend $2 million, of course, they can rebuild the whole house, but I can't afford that. It's, it's, it's going to defeat the purpose because I want to make money by putting in some money. So it's the investment and this is the revenue, or that's the, the return. So my goal is straight. I know what I'm going to do. So we have options, and I really had this option, uh, you know, in my life, like, we have a house project right now. Uh, so the options the better more the more options you have the better it is and you have criteria so you look at like you know what are the the, 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 the the constraints and criteria that you want to measure in the beginning that you want to compare in the beginning let's say if you hire a painter it's it's a great idea it's going to take less time quality is going to be perfect but it's going to cost me a lot of money and it's red because i can't afford this thing this is above my constraint i can't have it if, we, if I do do it yourself with basic tools, with the brush and everything, it's so cheap, but the quality isn't that good, and it's going to take me a really long time, because my tenants are going to come soon. I can't afford this because I have to finish the project soon, and the quality is not that good, and I don't want to score with this option either. The third option is do it yourself with professional tools. So you go to a Home Depot, you buy your rent those professional tools with paint sprays and everything. Obviously, it's going to cost more money. But the quality is going to be better, and it's going to take less time. So it's very important to all document all this in the upfront. It's just many people do this in, the, in their head, and then they say, oh, yeah, let's, let me just go this way. 
this gives you a clear picture. Writing something is very important. It's structuring. You may have this, you may be the smartest person, but when you write, that knowledge is structured and it's documented. It's extremely, extremely important. So write down uh, the options, and then based on the criteria, and this could be more. You can look at other things. Then you can rate them, and you can say this is the most important thing for me. This is the second most important thing, and this is the most important, the third most important thing. Based on the results, choose the best option, and then this table can be also reused after when you want to do plan B because if you want to let's say go this way and in the middle you feel like you won't be able to finish the project on time then you can hire a painter <coughs> uh, is it the best option no but you know it's, it's, it's probably better than just not renting it because the money that you're going to invest for hiring a painter is going to be less than the rent money that you're going to get so you make that judgment but always use a table like this that's that's a good start um, so, we are still in the planning stage and the goals, so what are the critical milestones and the final deadline? <coughs> so, this is a very simple project. Uh, so, we are, we are going to do pre-painting, which is like before you paint, you fix the walls, sand the walls and do everything. Then you, you do the print, paint job, then you clean the house, because you can't just rent the house with all the crap on the floor, you have to clean it very well. So these are, then you put times, you say, I'm going to be done with this time, the test at by the time, by the time, and by the time, and you have the absolute deadline. That is, if you want to rent this house by January 1st, you have to be done by December 30th. As you notice, the last task ends in December 23rd, and the, the deadline is December 30th. So you have seven days bumper period. This is just in case, because projects are late, you know, uh, I have a... Uh, some statistics uh, that my, my professor showed me, that was 2003, 85 of the software projects are late. Mm -hmm. Just 15 project percent of them are uh, completed on time, so it's going to be late. And so, just in charge sure. Do you know the reason why they are late? Uh, there are so many factors. It's, it could be because it's about, this is software field. Yeah, sure. uh, you know, software field is like, it's still in the stone age because software is new. We started doing the software 50 years ago, and uh, we don't have enough people. There are so many uh, so many variables, mm -hmm. and then there are so many dependencies. Like in my organization, <coughs> when we are working on a software, sometimes we are late because the vendor who's going to give us something is late. So when <coughs> they, they are late, we are late, and our customer is late. It's like a domino effect. Yeah, sure. And then the, the more players there are, the more failure points you have. And in software, that's usually the case. So a bumper period is usually mm -hmm. smart, and you set this bumper period depending on the project, depending on yourself, because that's why post-mortem is very important. A lot of people, including myself, I'm not very good at timing. So I say, if I say I'm going to be finished in one week, let's just make it nine days. Because I know it's just like, short, it's going to be a short, uh, short plan. Uh, I put like a 15 or 20 percent, maybe sometimes 50 percent more based on my judgment. Because I know it's going to take longer. Uh, you don't know how long it's going to take longer, but it's for the safety period. So bumper period is extremely important if you want to catch the deadline. If you don't have a bumper period, and if you put this December 23rd, or shift all these deadlines to gener towards January 1st, if something goes wrong, if you can't paint just one day because it rains, you're going to be late, and then you're going to lose out of money. The best, the most important part of project management is risk management, because project management is very straightforward. You want to paint the house, by that time, this is my budget, let's do it. Yeah, it's straightforward. But Projects will have issues. You know, not everything goes smoothly. You'll have issues. You'll have unexpected surprises. You have things. So, one thing that you have to think about is the risk management. What can go wrong, and how can I take care of it, or is, does it really matter? So, risk management is you have to find out the risk areas first. Like, sometimes there are things that you can think of. Sometimes there are things that you cannot think of. That's why you have the bumper period. But for the controllable risks, you first find them out. What can go wrong? We may have a physical injury, like we can break a leg when we are doing the painting. Well, the possibility is, and when you look at the risk, you have to find out how likely is it to happen. If it's 1% likely to happen, you probably don't care, because it's like it's not very high probability. But breaking a leg or having a physical injury, based on your judgment, is 25%, let's say. And the cost is a lot, because you have a day, day job. If you break your leg, you won't be able to go to your day job, you are not going to make money. That's going to cost you a lot of money. So you want to really take care of this thing. You don't want to take this risk, and you mitigate the risk. How do you mitigate the risk? 
you get a leg support, let's say, so that your leg is not going to be broken or you have a body armor or something. So you look at the possibility of the risk, you look at the cost of the risk. So if that thing goes wrong, what happens? I'm going to lose a lot of money. Then you look at the cost of mitigation. How much money does it cost to get that you know, shin guard? It cost me $20. Let me buy it. Because if I invest $20, it's going to save me a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So that's how you do risk mitigation. You find out the risk, you do the calculation, then you say, no, should I invest in mitigating this thing? If you want to mitigate the risk, you put some money. Everything is an investment. Even if you think it's an investment, it's opportunity cost. You could have been thinking about something else. So you have a cost that is going to just uh, mitigate this risk nicely. Second risk could be a cost of damage. Let's say you are fixing the house, sanding the door, you know, walls, and then you have electrical damage to the house. Possibility is 10%. Cost of risk is, you know, uh, three dollars or you know three unit dollars and cost of medication is like just very cheap so you also take care of this because the cost is extremely cheap you can easily afford this mitigation the third one is breaking a wall while fixing it so if if you break the wall you have to put a new wall basically you have to hire a contractor for that possibility is 25 percent cost of risk is just very very little because you know if you hire a contractor it's going to cost you 200 dollars it's not a huge cost it's not like breaking your leg and not making let's say $200, $300 a day. The cost is little, possibility is not too much. So you just say, and the cost of mitigation is, how can you mitigate this thing? Maybe you shouldn't touch the wall, or you should touch it with a, you should buy a, or rent a tool which is very expensive. At the end of the analysis, you say, I know this is a risk, but I don't want to take, I don't want to mitigate this, it's because it's going to cost me too much money. The, 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 the mitigation cost is going to cost me more money than it's ever. Even if it happens like this, it's going to cost me less. I don't want to mitigate because it doesn't make sense. So I just pass this. But this analysis is extremely important. This is a house project. Imagine that you're sending a, you know, a satellite to the, to the moon or something, to the space. There are going to be so many risks involved here, and there's going to be a huge risk management. Because if without a good risk, uh, good, uh, risk management, your project may fail. And at the end, most importantly, you find alternatives. What's my plan B? What happens if something goes wrong? What can I do as an alternative? That's extremely important because in the middle of the project, you may not have time to think about it. It's good to be prepared. Then we have the metrics. Uh, you identify the metrics. In business uh, or technology, they call it KPIs, Key Performance Indicators. These are how you measure the success. Like. Okay, I'm going to paint my house well, but what, the, what are the important things? Like, yes, I want to rent, you know, paint it really well because I want to rent it in the highest price possible. But what are the points? What are my <laughs> sub goals? How can I measure the success? Because this is a very simple example, the paint should look homogeneous. You shouldn't have like dark spots or light spots, right? It should, when you look at it, it should look like very slick and nice. Lines should be straight and clean, and house should be very clean after the project is completed. So these are my KPIs, key performance indicators. How do I measure this is another story. Maybe you hire somebody or you bring your girlfriend. How does it look? And then she says, it's beautiful. Then you say, check, this is done. So without measuring, you can't find out if you're reaching the goals or not. And then it's really important to find this thing and continuously check it all the time. And you put the most important one on the top. That's another thing about project. You know, sometimes you may not have time to finish everything. Always put the most important thing at the top. That's going to save you a lot of time. So, execution and post-mortem. So, my slides today is mostly focusing on the planning part of project management. So, and planning is very important and execution is also very important. You may have a perfect plan, but you can execute badly. Because your people may not be the best people or you, you have maybe not super good communication skills or you know, not very good task skills. So the project may fail, that's the execution problem. So, today the focus was on you know, the, the, the planning. But eventually, something is going to be executed. So when you execute this house project, you have to do task management and people management. You have to work with your wife, your kids, whoever is involved, and then make sure that everybody knows what they are doing and they, they deliver you on time that, that they promised. You look at the milestones. At that time, I have to clean the walls. At that time, I have to paint. And at the end, I have to clean uh, the house before I deliver to my tenants. You put the KPIs. How am I going to measure the success? Then. You find out if you have an issue during the during the execution, should I switch to plan B? Is it the time? Am I late for my tenants? If you do that, 
analysis if it's time uh, you can just switch to plan B before it's too late. So it's very important to check continuously, very frequently, the status of the project. So uh, in my job, what we do is if the project is extremely important, we do uh, we have meetings every day for five minutes or 25 minutes or one hour. You don't want to kill everybody to bring to the room and then because a meeting is costly, you have like 10 people and then everybody is working like X dollars an hour. If you, you know, multiply 10, it's very costly for the company. But without continuous checking, you can't know if the project is going good or bad. It's, it's extremely important that we do frequent check checkups, checkpoints in a project. That's why we, why we do it almost every day. So we finish the project. Everybody's happy. So are you done yet? No. We do the post-mortem. If you want to be a good project manager and you don't have to work as a project manager, what do that? You guys have education background. You're going to work in the education field. But you're going to work on the projects. Everything that you do is a project. Finally, you deal with the postmortem. Postmortem is you basically look at the project and say, what went good, what went bad? Was it a good project? Yes. Did I put all the goals? <coughs> yes. What did go wrong? This, that. You basically analyze your performance because next time you want to be better than that. So once you analyze the good things and the bad things, then the next thing is how can I improve myself? Let's say at the end you may find out, oh, my uh, projection was I'm going to be done with the painting in one week, but I was done in <coughs> two, three weeks. So something is wrong with my judgment, so I have to just correct that thing. That's how you improve yourself. You first find the problem, you improve yourself, so next time you have a better uh, time setting in the project. And finally, some tools. Uh, basically, there are you know, a lot of tools that you can use. Uh, MS Project, Microsoft Project is one popular one. Uh, because I didn't go to touch the tools uh, that you can use in project management. There are some charts, there are some uh, uh, diagrams that you can use for project management which are visual. And then I definitely recommend using a tool if it's a big project. If it's a small project, don't kill yourself doing that. But uh, if it's a big project, it's, it makes sense. If you can, uh, download one of these tools and then get familiar with it because you can use it for your big projects and then in your life. And it, even if it's a small project, if you want to document everything, you can just use that tool. Uh, I was <coughs> Googling yesterday, I found this smartsheet.com. Uh, basically, it's a web tool. It's just like you don't have to deinstall anything. You just go there and add tests and uh, find the dependencies between tests and the timelines and everything is there very easily uh, managed. You can find my information, uh, from more information in Wikipedia or the, I found a very good uh, book, projectmanagementtraining.net. Uh, so I think they may be talking about a little bit more technology side of project management, but again, project management is project management. It's all the same. It may have different flavors, but it's going from point A to point C. It's all the same thing. Right. And that's about it. Thank you. If you have any questions. Is the Starship.com free? I believe so. I believe so. Because it didn't let me, it didn't ask me any login or anything like that. I went in and then oh. it said, what's the next project? You just had to click the button. I mean, if that thing doesn't work, just Google it. There are a lot of tools that you can use. Or sometimes, like, very cheap, like $10 or $20 to download. To right, things. right. Yeah. Questions? Comments? Very clear, thank you. Clear? Yeah, very. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, I guess the way we approach for a project Planning management is the same as we make a plan with lesson plans. Yes, yes. Because we say, we say that, okay, what's the goal, what's the, what's the objective of this lesson? And to reach it, first we measure where the students are and how can I bring it to the, the goal. And what's other options to get there. Mm -hmm. Do you do, do any risk management? What if something goes wrong <coughs> that day? Yeah, we do. Okay. Yeah, right. Like, I mean, I think, I'm, I'm sorry, but um, I think it was a very good presentation, first of all, and I think you were the right person, because what I'm thinking from my perspective, like, he's an engineer, software so he is using, like, very concrete examples, like house, and, yeah, you know, yeah. sometimes in social sciences, for example, like, we can get lo lose ourselves yeah. with, you know, definitions <laughs> and things, nobody understands, so it was a very good choice to uh, listen from, but, like, really, like, 
I agree. Uh, you have been saying a couple of times, uh, three times, that all projects are projects. It's, it, either we do a like global education project in a school, or you do your soft manager. Mm -hmm. I agree. But one thing, like when we do uh, project management, in reality, it's just I'm talking about from my perspective and from my experiences. Do we really do like this, like in this sharp manner? You know, like risk management. What's my, you know, I don't know. Like um, that's like a question I want to. Open or we just do okay. It's my goal, and then they are where the students are. This is the gap. That's what I should do. But then let's do it. Like I don't know, like if we are doing it in a very like sharp steps. Okay, what are the risk management? What are my options if something goes wrong? I don't know. Do we really do it? Uh, from my experience, I usually set a timeline. So on that day, I have to do. I have to finish this task. On that day, I have to finish this task. I always keep thinking about. I mean, I don't really take a list and check it all the time. But I keep thinking about okay. Mm -hmm. For example, for for running this workshop, I was thinking about okay, what I'm gonna do next week, and what if this happens, and what gonna what is gonna what is gonna be my plan B, and you know, yeah, all the right. time thinking about constantly. But in big projects like where people work together. Uh -huh. yeah, I also have a question about your plan B. You said that we we should we should come up with plan B mm -hmm. if plan plan one doesn't work. Yes. So do we need to put it put put the plan B in the Project management always it's, it's, or it's, it's good to think about it because let's say <coughs> if you don't think about it in the middle of let's mm -hmm. say you get caught like you know let's say if I didn't have a plan B if it snows today I'm going to be very disappointed oh it snows what am I going to do but I thought about it even if it snows I said I'm going to put my thing in and still cook it outside mm -hmm. it's good to get pre prepared for it sometimes you don't have plan B mm -hmm. sometimes there's only one way and you have to take it but that my painting project I I, I really have a painting job. That I have to finish. If I can't finish on time, I'm gonna hire a painter. Because mm -hmm. if I can't finish the project, I'm gonna put some tenants in, and uh, I'm gonna be late because I'm gonna lose a re one month's re rent money. That's cheaper than hiring a painter. So it's, mm -hmm. if I'm late, I'm gonna hire somebody. That's my plan B. Yeah. So it's important. No, no, I want to. No, to go past I want to say something. So it's very important in the beginning to put all the like scenarios, maybe like mm -hmm. uh, at least two, three, yeah. like when you start it, the project. Okay, if it happens, like. At least a couple of other options. Exactly. I mean, it may be overkill. People may say, I mean, not everybody does that. I'm not a very good project manager in my life either. But it's the more planning you have in the beginning, you're going to see the advantage in it. Because especially everything is documented there. Even if it's one pager, mm -hmm. it's still like you post it somewhere, you have eye contact with that thing. So it's visuality and the writing structure helps people think, you know, better. Book my professor is writing is about goal driven lesson plan. So her idea is most teachers come to class so they know what they are gonna do for this class, but they don't have a big picture in their mind. <coughs> so what she suggests is you start from the big picture. What what's your goal for the end of the semester? And you set your goals, but it has to be observable and uh, kind of measurable. Yes. And exactly. then you break it down into the sub objects and then you just move students toward each goal. And actually it makes teachers work easier. It's easier for assessment because <coughs> you just see if students reach this point just depending on what goals you set for this class. I mean so from uh, my teaching experience I sometimes feel if I doing this way I still cannot I still don't have the exact timeline. Plus my for example my goal is for students to have this language I mean to know how to use this structure let's say. But I mean there are so many different factors involved in that. Maybe my students are from different levels I don't know before, I cannot assess well. So at this point they still don't know how to use this structure. And then I cannot move to the next structure because they are so dependent on each other. So in this case I I set the timelines but many times I cannot follow. But I think it's different between software and like the well, in software too, it's like don't think of a software that we know everything. They give us a big like book and say do this thing. It's we have a lot of unknowns too. Uh, that's why there are different software management uh, methods. There are many, mainly two one, uh, two of them. There's the waterfall method and the, the 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 agile method. In the waterfall, you do all these things up front, and then you go to the next step. You plan, execute, and then you're done. That's waterfall. It's just like waterfalling the stairs. The other one is called agile because you don't know everything up front. Just like you said, it's unknown and everything is dependent on each other. If you start, if you try to just 
put down everything in the beginning, you won't be able to because there are so many x, y, z's, unknowns in the variable, in the equation. So you basically just start with the known ones. Once you come to the next point, once you see the road, the rest of the road a little clear, then you adjust your project plan. Mm -hmm. So you continuously update the sheet that you do. Not like an upfront list, this time you continuously update it, continuously update it. That's called agile because it's fast. Mm -hmm. We usually uh, prefer agile because it's faster and then you have you know, uh, uh, more frequent checkpoints. You complete one task and you go back and say, I don't care, you wanted a vehicle, here's the tires. Is it good? Yes. Next day you put the chases, next day you put the air condition system and the doors. That's the agile thing. You continue to check. It's a spi spiral iterative model. So it's very uh, uh, useful for software. You can use it for your thing too. Yeah. Just I go and check the agile methods. You know what you are going to do, what you want to achieve, so you can make adjustments. Yes. And make sure you don't go away. But usually the main goal doesn't change, right? I mean, yeah, the main goal, the main goal yeah. doesn't change. You want to go from A to Z, but you don't know B. You don't know D. Yeah. You don't know the routes, but you want to go from here to LA. Yeah. But, but yeah, the, the next thing is that once they are not known, start the road with the known ones because you have to do it. It's better than just waiting. Mm -hmm. And then when you come to the checkpoint, look at the map again and see, okay, now I have busy better visibility. Now mm -hmm. let me go back and then take a flight because I won't be able to make it. So it's always good to do continuous assessment. When it comes to the uh, other phase of learning, and as a teacher, you know, I have to manage the situations that the students are doing the project. Do you think it? Maybe I think. I don't know. Do you think it's a good idea to give a checklist <coughs> and, and push them to check all the time the list if they are sure. doing it okay? And, you know, That's called collaboration. Uh, you have to always collaborate and delegate. Sometimes you are not the best person. Sometimes you don't want to be the best person, a single person. If you do the right way, if you do it the right way, if you delegate it and collaborate carefully, you're going to get a lot of support and you're going to have teamwork. So instead of you just like bubbling your brain cells, you can get some help from people and they can say, oh, my paid project, I may be late, just for information. So this line is risky. So you have a better communication with those people. So that, that's definitely something good. That's uh, collaboration and humor. That's that's a good idea. That's the execution part. Okay. What do you think about that? Just keep thinking about it. <laughs> so <coughs> maybe it's a good idea also um, ask the students to come up with a list of that they have to check before they do the project. So Rubric? yeah, say that okay, yeah. you're doing this and you're here. Your goal is to get there. So what do you think you have to do? I think you have to check today and tomorrow and in the middle and... Yeah. Or what should I do for you? Like, you know, right. it's something you can recommend or suggest uh -huh. that I think it's also very important to ask their opinions, even they are small. Right, right. Is that the same with need, need analysis? What do you mean? Yeah, Asking students analysis. about what they want or what, what, what we they want need to as go a to teacher. Go. Yeah. yeah. Is that the need <coughs> analysis something? I think at first, I mean, the teachers should have their own rubrics and then she always do this. So have your goals transparent to students and then you can ask for students feedback and then have them tell back or either tell back or just multiply according to their needs. Yeah. I mean, in the software, it just works as, as you described very well. In the software, when you're a project manager, you put it on, on the board, everybody sees what's going on. Mm -hmm. So they then say, say, because they're involved. If you just hide it right. from people and you, they go, then, did you do that task? That person is just going to see his task, but he doesn't know if you are waiting for something from him. If he knows, if she knows that you're dependent to him or her, she's going to be faster because she's going to say, oh, if I'm late, the project is going to shift. It's good to just share everything up front, like in a big table saying that this project is dependent to that project, so this has to finish on time or something. If people see this, it's an advantage. Yeah. I guess also it gets more, you know, the ownership the project. That's also, and then it, you also create a competitive environment. like. Yeah. Many put a set of goals in front of people, they want to achieve it. If you don't set goals in front of people, they don't care. You have to set goals, watch them, do it, motivate them. If you are, if you are doing people management, then reward them at the end, if they are successful. Do we do it as a teacher? Hmm? Do we show the goals that, hey, this is the... I age. Yeah, I guess as a teacher, I don't know, maybe I would be a little scared that evaluated by the students and say... I think, you know what? 
this is the leadership thing, right? If you want right, to give right. leadership, you should right. give them that thing. You should give them the opportunity. Like, give them the thing. They will screw things up, but watch them, correct their mistakes. Mm. That's a leadership opportunity for them. I think it's students know the, the, the goal of the learning by course syllabus, actually. Right. But it's just one time for the first time, and then they forget what, what the goals are. Mm. So we, we have to remind them in each class or in each lesson plan that, okay, to the, to, today what we're going to do, so that at the end of the of the class, what we're gonna get? I think we sh we should remind them every time that we meet them, rather than just telling them the course syllabus and then it's up to us the the path to go to to that goal and then forget everything. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to say. Like what uh, with your comment, like um, <clears throat> that's as I'm speaking with from my experiences. Like for example, as you gave, like I have a goal for this class, like this next one and a half hours, 90 minutes, and like, do we see the really, like the big picture, okay, I will teach from September to December, mm -hmm. and you know, do we really like us assess, and do we really, okay, what would be the needs or risks in this next three months, like do we really do it, or um, as now, like adding to this discussion, like as, do we give the leadership to other, or you know, like such things, like do we really do it, like so, you know, clearly in our projects, mm -hmm. teaching, or... This is what I learned in class, and yeah. I'm still trying to do that. But one suggestion my professor gave me is, you write your lesson plan starting from the end. That is, ah. usually teachers just go what we're going to teach, I mean, from the beginning to the end. But now you start from the end, what I want my students to achieve, and then you go back. So how yes. can I lead them to achieve that goal? Well, I'm trying to do that, but it's kind of helpful. I don't know how it's going to work out. So you write the goal first, and then you go back. Is it, is it more difficult, difficult than starting from the start? First time the analysis, or something like there is a terminology for that strategy. Really? The yeah. need analysis, you mean? No, need Soft analysis. Soft analysis? Uh, no, need analysis is no, very different. So you have your, first so the end point, <coughs> right, the end right. point is the goal, but you, you do need analysis mm -hmm. to determine the starting point. And then there is the gap, and then you right, figure out right. how to run from gap right. from point A to right, right. This is yeah. more difficult than starting from from point one? It's just different mindset. I tried writing that way, but you have to get used to that. But usually a teacher do it. Oh, what's I'm going to do? Yeah. Step one, step two. And now you just turn back. It's That's just different mindset. Seems like you don't have any other questions for him, right? <laughs> Thank you. That's all I know. More information, yeah. go online. <laughs> Thank you, Katie, and Project Management Training. Thanks to Mustafa. And uh, we're going to take a 10-minute break, and then we're going to come back for our discussion.